Let me make sure my MacBook camera is clean. So it's almost 2025 and look at the video quality that you are seeing right here. This is on my Apple Silicon MacBook Pro, a fairly expensive device. And according to Apple, whether you have an M1 Max all the way to like the M3 Max MacBook Pro, it doesn't really matter because if you look at the camera that these devices have, it's pretty much the same. It's a 1080p camera with some sort of advanced image signal processor and this is the result and this is how it looks so mac cameras or in general laptop cameras have seen very little improvements over the years but times have changed and nowadays people are working more of in like a hybrid work situation where it's like half in the office, half from home. So they need cameras that are pretty good and reliable. But the little pinhole camera that the laptops have just doesn't cut it. And you can see the results for yourself right here. And I'm actually pretty well lit. I have a big expensive like $600 light and another light on this side as well and some background lights to make the scene look a little bit better. But you can make it better with one tiny small camera and it's actually called tiny. See what I just did there? The video that you are looking at right now comes from a small tiny camera that fits in here and it's called the Obsbot Tiny 2. This is how it looks and I just took it right out the box and plugged it into the USB-C port of my Mac and you can see how the quality looks. I think for meetings, this is a big step up from the built-in camera that my MacBook Pro has. And at the same time, if I gesture to the camera just like this, it blinks to show that it's now tracking me. And so if I move side to side, it's now tracking me. So if I'm demonstrating something like on a whiteboard or moving around, you can see the camera does a really good job and it doesn't end there. You notice if I was to stand up and begin to move around, this device continues to track me and follow me around. It almost does a 180 degree turnaround. And if I actually move too far out of frame, it sort of loses track, but the moment I walk back into the frame, it's able to track me without any problems or any issues. And at the same time, just as the angle, like the angle that I was able to do going that way applies this way as well. So it pretty much covers you almost right round. And if you have a wireless mic, it's just that I have a boom mic right here. If I stand up, I think it will follow me. Yeah, you see this boom mic? This is the one that I'm using. But if you have a wireless mic for meetings or if you are doing Zoom teams or educating people online, it's pretty good. You clip on your wireless mic and you move around. And it also comes with a built-in microphone. And shout out to Obsbot for send, sending the Tiny 2 over for me to be able to review. I've been using it for about three weeks now. And these are the results of it. Just to show you why the Obsbot Tiny 2 is actually pretty good in low light it's because it has one over 1.5 CMOS sensor that has dual native ISO. In case you're wondering what comes in the box, this is how the Obsbot Tiny 2 box comes. You can see the different angles. And when you open the box, it welcomes you to a new era of webcam. And it has QR code that you can scan to help you get started alongside the user manual that is written in multiple different languages. It has voice controls as well that you can be able to use without having to touch the device or going into the software. And it has warranty policy that you can read about the Obsport Tiny 2. This is the bag that it comes in, very portable. And inside that bag, you have a USB-C to USB-A dongle, just in case your device doesn't have USB-C. And you have a USB-C to USB-C cable. And at the same time, you get this magnetic clip that goes on top of your laptop. And the Obsport Tiny 2 camera just sits on top of it. And it has a lip that grips the front of your laptop so that it doesn't slide over to give it a more firm stand and this is how the Obsbot Tiny 
2022 looks this is it has the obsbot engraving right on and you can see the rotation that the camera is able to do almost 360 degrees and when it reaches the edge you can tell and of course at the back it has a USB-C cable I'll remove the safety clip of the camera and you can see that one of a 1.5 inch sensor and when you put the camera on the stand the magnetic clamp is actually pretty strong and it's not going to fall off or fall down. I'm going to show you a quick side by side comparison of the Obsport Tiny 2 that you're looking at right now versus the MacBook Pro Apple Silicon device and you'll be able to tell which one looks better. So this is the Obsport Tiny 2 that you're looking at. This is my palm right here and if I put my hand you can see how the bag looks it just you know my, i'm able to grip it pretty quick and at the same time uh, i like that this can fit in your pocket and in your bag and you can carry it on remote sites and for it to be able to work like what you're looking at right now i didn't have to install any software or do any changes i just plugged it into my mac using USB C, and i quickly read the manuals and the commands so i know what to do in order to have it track me and it's simple plug and play and you have pretty good 4k 30 signal that you are looking at right now and it's a much better improvement from my uh, macbook pro uh, inbuilt camera but if you want to take things to the next level you can download the Obsbot Center application you can find how to download it in the Obsbot Tiny 2 user manual it comes with a QR code that you can scan and it will take you to the site and when you open it this is how it looks so quickly just to show you the functions of it if you press the camera here you can see it shows you the feed that you are previewing and this is the camera that you can see right here and here you can see what i'm recording at you can choose different recording formats 4k 30 1080p 60 and other formats as well and you can choose your beat rate of course i have mine on high beat rate and you can choose what format you want to record in and the audio also is captured by the obs tiny 2 it has a microphone internally that you can use or if you have like a device that you want to set as the cap the microphone input you can always set it to always open and that will be your default camera whenever you open up the software right here and it will be able to capture professional audio at the same time if you want to use like shortcuts you can open this up and see different shortcuts if there's a software update you be able to update your device from there the cool thing that i like about this device is that if you want to rotate your feed you can see how you have the ability to do that or if you want to mirror your feed this is how it looks when i mirror mine if you want to have like the grid line to be able to center you you can enable those right here now this button that you see here automatically begins recording and because I set my recording in MOV format the video and audio that is going to capture is going to be saved in my downloads folder in that format and you can pause your recordings and if you want to continue click play or just stop the recording just there and you click done right there and you to tell you where your recording went and right here you can see you have the virtual camera that you can set and once you have it set it will show up in your meeting application such as zoom or teams and you can always select it and whatever you do in the obsbot center application or software on your device will be able to trans be translated over to those applications and you get more manual controls using this and at the same time right here if you want to take a quick picture or snapshot you can press that and it will quickly take a snap and if you want to see your recordings you can do that or if you want to choose a different audio from here this is where you select that now this is where you can select different beauty features so if you want like bokeh you can turn this toggle on and then if i pull the switch all the way you can see how the bokeh changes <laughs> i'm not one to use i like mine to look like as natural as possible and if you want to do some different retouches you can see the different for classic native or man but I usually don't use this and at the same time if you want to use different filters you can be able to use those and enable those and see what works and you have a level that you can set for your filters to be able to uh, adjust and 
I'm just as natural as possible just doing that. And right here under the image part, you have console. So if you want to enable zone tracking, you can do that. If you want to choose different motion tracking, you have standard or you have motion where it's more sensitive to the motion. And here, the one that I use is normal tracking. And this is how normal tracking looks as I move side to side. I usually keep it on standard. If you want to just track the upper body, then your device or the camera is just going to track the upper body. If you want close up, then it's going to focus mainly on the close up portion. If you want headless, like you have a necklace or something that you are demonstrating, then the device is going to focus right there. If you want lower body, or maybe the table or something, you can do that. But also this desk view that you can set, which would do more like a highlight of your table to be able to demonstrate something. And you have different uh, modes that you can do. So here we have AI modes where you can enable desk mode, whiteboard or hand and hand mode. You notice my hand, if I move my hand up and down like this, it's tracking my hand. So if I'm typing something like on a camera and I'm moving around, it will continue to track my hand. If I bring it closer to my mouth, you can see how it tracks it. And if you are like in a meeting or in a group, then you can also be able to select the group mode and do that. Now you can add different presets as well. And at the same time, you can control the gimbal if you want to manually control it and set it to a specific position or at an angle this is where you can do that and you can choose the zoom as well so if you have uh, 1x is just normal and you have all the way to 4x and you can see how much i can zoom in right here I'll, I'll go out or wide as possible i'll just select wide and here you have image settings that you can set hdr tone mapping if you want that you can do that you have uh, global focus or face focus i usually use face focus and anti flicker if you're in the uk and you don't want your lights to flicker through or in regions where 50 hertz is your power grid or your lights then you can choose that i'm in north america so 60 hertz and you can choose your white balance you can change your image settings and contrast and if we go to the more tab right here you you can have the device sleep after a specific timer or if you want to set some backgrounds you can be able to do that where, while the device sleeps under the gesture control this is where you have the ability to select different hand gestures to be able to initiate it to track human on and off or execute zoom in and zoom out and you have the ability for the dynamic zoom so if i have if i do my hands like this it will find it and then if i bring them in like this and then zoom in you can see how it zooms in if i start again and then zoom in again it zooms in and i can continue to do that it's pretty fun the things you can do with this camera if you want to do a direction flip you can do that or if you want to use voice controls like for example you can see here i can say uh hi tiny then sleep tiny and you can see the device goes to sleep and this is the screen that i come it comes to if i say hi tiny the device just wakes up and it automatically resumes and you can see this comes back if i say um uh, hi tiny zoom out further it zooms out further hi tiny track me and you can see now it begins to track me if i move side to side it's tracking me if i say hi tiny unlock me and boom it's now unlocked me and the light goes from blue to green so now it's no longer tracking me so you have multiple different voice controls and commands that you can do and here again it tells you about the audio and other the firmware version or if you want to factory reset it you can be able to do that so that's pretty much what this device can do and keep in mind that on this section here you have a remote controller that you can also purchase as an additional accessory and it will allow you to be able to do uh, controls with the tiny two camera while it's further away and set presets so in simple fact or simply foot this is how the obsbot tiny two device looks i've been recording using it for my a row right now so if you wanted 
it to be like a YouTube video or to capture and record videos, this is how it would look. So you can see it's still tracking me right now. It's a pretty fun little device. I like that it comes with a pretty hard case box. So if it's in the bag and you have other camera equipments, you don't have to worry about it getting crushed or stuff like that. And that's the Obsbot Tiny 2. Shout out to Obsbot for sending it over for me to review. And I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video. My name is Ben and I'm signing out. Peace.